Welcome to episode 299 of Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, if you're watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from. Uh, otherwise, um, if you're a replay warrior, hello and welcome. We're going to be doing Halloween projects tonight. Sounds like static and a tap dance. I should have known to reboot my microphone. So we're going to do this again. We've got a... Um, I don't know what to call this. I'm probably going to ask the live chat to, to when we make this to let me know what you think this should be called. <laughs> um, but I think it's like a diagonal, I'm calling it like a diagonal treat bag. And then we've got this fun fold, which is so easy to do. It's got this little mechanism like so. So these are Halloween projects, obviously using the bag of bones bundle or the them bones sweet finally the bag of bones bundle is back in stock and these can easily be adjusted for christmas or thanksgiving or fall projects but i had to squeeze in one more group of halloween projects before the month of october how are we more than halfway through september i have no idea now brian are you ready for your cameo <laughs> Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question, make sure you put a cue before that question so that it'll make it into my cue when we do the live Q&A at the end of tonight's live stream. Uh, I'm going to focus on creating tonight's projects, but I'll save all of your questions till the end and I'll stay on till I answer all the questions that come through during the live stream. When you shop with me, you earn pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to, all you need to do is use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically take you to the Stampin' Up! online store, shopping with me and with my current host code attached to your order. Now, if your order is gonna be $150 or more, you'll wanna make sure to remove that host code. You can do so in on the shopping cart screen, but you'll earn Stampin' Rewards on orders of $150 or more. You'll also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. We had a clearance rack refresh uh, yesterday. Lots of wonderful products still available on the clearance rack. We also do have um, some online exclusives as well. I wanted to show you how to find those. If you click on menu at stampinup.com and then online exclusives, this will also show you the five new um, special release designer series papers plus a new kit. So we've got Traditions of St. Nick, Shining Christmas, Delightful Floral, Tartan Floral, and the Silver and Gold Adhesive-Backed Glimmer Paper. All five of those papers are while supplies last. They are beautiful. I've looked at all of them. I have not used all of them yet, um, but I am a sucker for beautiful paper. So that is the online exclusives. You can also find the clearance rack by going to Specials, Clearance, and we've got lots of products still available on the clearance rack. So check those out for sure. Let's see. I do have some show and tell from the kiddos tonight. Let me show you a sneak peek of what we're creating again tonight. This really cool fun fold. And I'll show you the projects that inspired me as well. And this treat holder, which holds my absolute favorite candy bar at the moment. It has changed a couple times over my lifetime but right now it's the Take 5 candy bar. So this is created with a six by six piece of designer series paper, which is fitting because we got all the product shares to the post office on Monday and they are all starting to arrive to those of you who ordered them from me. So you'll get lots of six by six paper if you participate in the paper share. This is a great project to use your papers with. So Lily's got show and tell for us this week. She again went to Draw So Cute Wenny. Um, I love that artist. And Lily embellished her puppy dog. She said she put the, um, what's that called on the head? I'm, I always forget my words when I go live, but she said the forehead was a little too big, so she wanted to embellish it. So this is the Dog Olympics. This is Lucy Johnson. And <laughs> a little bit of a pep rally here. Let's go, Lucy. Let's go Lucy, wish this pup good luck in the dog Olympics. This is all embellished by Lily. <laughs> and she says for more like this, go to lilydemadio at pupperoo.com, not an actual website that we know of, but <laughs> I thought that was cute. So that's from Lily, she is our fifth grader. And then Brian's gonna pass me Nolan's uh, project at the moment. Again, he's on that giant platform we've been doing. Oh boy, would be the handoff here. 
He's building a little village and he's built two houses so far. Let me put this down flat here. I don't know if you can see this little skateboarder actually going up a ramp. And I think these are like air conditioner units on the top. He seems to be what he loves to do with these. I, I don't even remember what those originally came from, but he's having a lot of fun. There's a green space area, he said. <laughs> so that's Nolan's imagination. He is our second grader. All right, coming back to you. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to jump into the fun fold card tonight. So here is my Halloween version. And then here's the swap I received from backstage from demonstrator Karen Morgan. And I just thought it was such a cool mechanism. If you haven't seen this before, it's really easy to make. She used the, um, the Daisy Sweet, and I love the circle dies there, but it's just so cute and fun, and I love how the um, focal point of the card holds it all together. So um, I know we've been doing some fun folds where they kind of pop open. This is one where it stays closed. So thank you, Karen Morgan, for the inspiration. All right, I am using, well, let's bring in the catalog. Let me show you. I forget that I can now show you the inside of the catalog. So pages 48 and 49, of the mini catalog here is the Them Bones Suite. The suite comes with lots of fun stuff. I will tell you the glow in the dark paper is back in stock as of today. The embellishments are still out of stock, but you can grab the glow in the dark paper now. We've got the Bag of Bones bundle, this awesome designer series paper, which I'm gonna be using a couple different uh, patterns from that on tonight's projects. And you can get the whole suite, well, when the uh, glow in the dark Bats and ghosts come back in stock, the whole suite for $78.75 or pieces and parts of it. So I know so many of you guys are loving the Bag of Bones bundle. So tonight's a little bit of inspiration for you. I'm gonna show you that up close. So here's the stamp set. So much fun you can have with this. There's a bow tie and a heart and bats and a rose. Bonjour, <laughs> which I love that. Here are the Bag of Bones dies. You get 31 dies in the set. But as you can see, there is embossing and cutting that happens. I love the cowboy boots and the cowboy hat. You can have lots of fun with that. And then we are using, on this card, we're using the Stylish Shapes dies and that larger second largest. Uh, circle for the starry sky. We're going to be using the reach for the stars dies and the deckled circles on the 3D project. So for the card base, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to score a full sheet of basic black. This is eight and a half by 11 and you can get two card bases out of it. Now I'm not going to trim anything away until we do the scoring first. I didn't write any measurements down, so we'll see what happens tonight. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and score this at four and a quarter. So on the short side, the eight and a half inch side, scoring at four and a quarter. And then I'm gonna slide this to the one inch mark on the right side, so four and a quarter and one. Almost cut that, that wouldn't have been the end of the world. But, so four and a quarter right down the middle and one. Then I'm going to actually rotate it because I'm too lazy to open out to open the arm. <laughs> Instead of scoring, we're going to cut off one. Okay, so I'll repeat those measurements again. You can use this in your scraps for something else. So we first scored. Now pretend like that one inch is still here. Scored at four and a quarter, and one, and then we cut off one from the other side. Okay. Now we're going to go to the long side, the 11 inch side, and we're just going to cut it at five and a half. That's right down the middle. And what you'll have is two card bases that are scored and ready for embellishing. Okay. All right. So let me put one of these card bases away. I'll use in the future. I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on the score lines. Uh oh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> oh no, I did. Oh, I'm throwing myself off. I'm good. So, uh, this one inch score line, I folded and burnished it one way. And I'm going to fold and burnish it the other way. Okay, so you kind of break down the paper fibers so that it goes forwards and backwards, a little bit more pliable there. 
So that is gonna be the card base. We've got that one inch section. So this is the front that's got the shorter panel. And then the one that has the one inch score line, that's the back, okay? I'm gonna bring in my pieces and parts here. All right, so I've got a piece of basic white that measures, let me just double check this so I know, okay. Three inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall, and that's gonna adhere to the inside of the card to the left of the score line. Mm, we're gonna stamp that first. Let's do our stamping first, just in case Julie messes up her stamping. I'm confident, but not always that confident. All right, so I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I've got a scrap piece of basic white as well. We're gonna stamp the sentiment that each shriek and be scary. So now, what I did, this is the first time I inked up my stamps when I created these projects. So I wiped the uh, stamps on my pants. Nothing special about it, but I find that that holds the ink a lot better. So I'm gonna take the sentiment, eat, shriek, and be scary. It's kind of hard to read upside down. We're gonna stamp that on the scrap piece of basic white. Like so, okay? And for that one, I'm gonna take the smallest of the Stylish Shapes dies, and it's a tight fit, but really cute. I took inspiration from the catalog. So through the magic of video, I'm gonna run that through the stamp and cut and emboss machine, and then we'll have a piece that looks like so, okay? Now I decided to put a little kitty cat skeleton on the inside. There's a dog skeleton as well. We're not gonna have a debate over dogs or cats because I can't choose between either of them. <laughs> so I'll put the little kitty cat in the corner and then a pair of bats in the upper left corner. Just have add a little bit of interest to the inside of this card. I don't normally stamp the inside, but I couldn't resist with all the fun images in this stamp set. There we go, okay. All right, now we can start gluing down. So again, this three by five and a quarter basic white piece, I'm gonna adhere that to the left of the score line on the inside of the card. There we go. And then I had fun picking the pattern from the designer series paper. Let me show you the swatch book. Just got my swatch books from Brian this week, Brian King. Uh, so here we go. Love the colors they chose, especially throwing in the starry sky. I love that color in here. So this is the pattern that uh, we're using for the front of this card. It is specifically designed for card fronts. You can actually get one, two, three, six card fronts from it if you cut it strategically. I love this pattern, we're using that for the 3D. They're little bats. And then boo, eek. This, pa this page is super fun. There's all kinds of different panels that you can create for card fronts, like so. So I cut two pieces and technically I cut a piece that was five and a quarter by three and three quarters and then I trimmed off three quarters. So we're gonna put that three quarter by five and a quarter piece here and the three inch by five and a quarter piece here. Love the way that that looks together. Actually, let's do the small piece first. Now, I'm gonna give you a little tip. I've got a little bit of a jagged edge here because I probably need to replace my cutting blades. I just have one of those buffing mm, nail buffers, sanders. And then I can just kind of clean up the edge of that cardstock or that designer series paper to get rid of any paper fuzzies. It just cleans it up a little bit there. That side looks good. All right. So we'll take our little three quarter inch wide piece. 
And you'll notice we're using both sides of this paper tonight. This fun um, graveyard vignette for the card and then the bat herringbone pattern for the 3D project. And then we'll adhere this down. But what's so fun about this paper pattern is it just makes a card front like in an instant, doesn't it? You wouldn't need to add much to this. I thought I'd have some fun with it, but love it for a background as well. Rest in peace, jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> all right, so I have die cut all these pieces ahead of time to save time, but I'm gonna give you a couple tips and tricks. So this is the Starry Sky cardstock, and that is the uh, Stylish Shapes. Got that really cool stitching edge around it. We've got Smoky Slate for this, almost looks like a mausoleum um, die cut. And this is basic gray, but I love the cutting and embossing details. So we're gonna adhere that down there. Now the skeleton, you've got options with this suite. This is actually just die cut out of the designer series paper, which let me show you on the swatch book here. The whole page of these skeletons that you can die cut the human skeletons, the cat skeletons, and the dog skeletons. So isn't that cute? You can also stamp that guy and die cut him as well if you want to do um, stamping or just cutting from the patterned paper. And then I cut this fun fence out of basic black. So we're going to layer these pieces together. So funny, it's easy for me to line up um, sideways. Or easier, I should say, that. Now on the fence, I'm just gonna put a, bit, a little bit of liquid glue on the back, just some thin lines. Kind of avoiding the outside. What are those called with the fence? Planks, pickets. Pickets. I'm just not putting adhesive on the last and the outside ones. And then we'll line that up towards the bottom here. Just hold that into place. Look how cute the herringbone is on the back of our little skeleton. A little bit of glue on the back of him. A little happy dancing skeleton here. Too cute. Then our eat, shriek, and be scary. I keep thinking it says eat, drink, and be scary. Eat, shriek. Just do a pair of dimensionals on the back of that. here. I'm only going to put liquid glue kind of in the center of our little tombstone and put that on top of our starry sky circle just to kind of break up the colors here and add a little pop of that bluish purple. And then here is the trick to get this to work. So we are going to just kind of picture where we're gonna place it, but we're only gonna put dimensionals that are gonna to stick to this little one inch section here on the right, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. I'm gonna do three dimensionals. So one right there at the edge, and then these just kind of following the rounded edge of the circle. I'll show you up close in just a second. So kind of like that. So if I flip it over, it's just on that right side. Okay. So take off the backing. And then I'm going to layer this. So I'm coming over where I've got about an eighth of an inch of the designer series paper showing. And I'm going to press that into place. Now you can double check 
that your dimensionals are not getting in the way. So we don't have any overlap of the dimensionals. That's exactly what you want, okay? And literally that is how easy this fun fold card is. I love that. Now again, we folded this score line forwards and backwards. So it just makes it a little bit more pliable, which makes it really easy to open and close this card. Now we are missing one piece of bling. I'm just gonna bring in my favorite embellishment, the rhinestone basic jewels. And we'll add some bling here, bling it up. Now I know that that headstone is a little bit covered, but I love the fact that you can see it when you open the card. It's kind of a surprise. You have kind of three elements of surprise. This fun little layout here, and this guy, and then you got the fun stamping on the inside. So plenty of room for a little note and a super fun, fun fold card. Love it. All right, so that's the fun fold. Thank you again to Kathy Morgan for your inspiration. Let me bring her card back again. Forgot to point out, she's got this great, that rope, twisted rope embossing folder there. Super cute. So again, thanks, Kathy. All right, let's jump into tonight's 3D project. So I've got a six inch by six inch piece, piece of the, is it Them Bones? Yes, the Them Bones designer series paper. This is that herringbone pattern that has the bats that I think are adorable. They're cute little faces. All right, so um, I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored. This is gonna work the best with the Simply Scored and you also are gonna need a or this is gonna help you the most, a Sharpie line. I love to do it at the six inch, right down the center of my Simply Scored. What that does is help me when I line up these points diagonally, I can see that six inch score line at both the top and the bottom. That makes, that makes sure that I can line that up really easily. So with this pattern, this pattern is already diagonal and you'll see it's more diagonal than a perfect 90 degree, 45 degree, anyways, forget the, uh, <laughs> is it algebra? <laughs> um, I am starting with the point where these guys are kind of going up to the right, and that's just gonna make a difference when we do the treat bag. So, as you can tell, we've got our bats that are at least going in the right direction, or angled in the right direction, whereas on the back they're gonna be upside down. So, um, just for an example, if you turned it this way, even if this were the top, or if this were the top, you see how the bats are just kind of going in the wrong direction. So just pay attention to that, especially if you have a directional pattern, you just wanna kind of eyeball um, where the direction is going. And I like to start with the paper in the position where this top section is gonna be the front of this little gift bag. So with this towards the top, you wanna make sure you hold it in place at the six inch where you got the top and bottom corners at six inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and score this at, I like to do the right side first, but seven and a half and nine and a half. That's gonna be kind of a tiny little score line at the top, but that's gonna help us where we're gonna trim off an area. So seven and a half and nine and a half, and we're doing two and a half. And again, I'm trying to hold the paper in place so it doesn't slide, four and a half. Okay, so two and a half, four and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half. Then I'm gonna rotate it a quarter turn. This one doesn't matter so much, as long as you started in the right spot with the pattern. This time we are going to go six and a half. And five and a half, those two score lines, so five and a half and six and a half are gonna go all the way across. Now the next score lines are only gonna go until that first horizontal score line. We're gonna take a break and then pick it up again after the second horizontal score line. So I'm gonna bring a template in in just a moment, but we're gonna go ahead and do this at seven. But again, I need to stop and I can't see the score line with all the lights. So I'm stopping and then kind of keeping it in the same position and picking it up down at the bottom, okay? Now, if you needed to, you could flip this and do it the other way. If it's hard for you to stop in that middle section and then start again, then the next one is at five. 
So five, I'm feeling for that score line, picking it up. Oops, and down there. All right, so let me bring that up to the camera. Hopefully you can see with the light glare there. We did that, those two score lines, and stopped at that horizontal. So let me repeat those measurements again. You've got five and a half and six and a half going all the way across the paper. Then five and seven, but you want to skip that center section there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the template that's going to make it look a lot more clear. So I'm going to pretend that this was on the Simply Scored. We've got our corners here. We did our, um, if I can remember now, four and a half and seven and a half, two and a half and nine and a half. So see those score lines here? Then we turned it a quarter of a turn and we did five and a half and six and a half all the way. And then five and seven, but again, stopping at that horizontal score line and then picking it back up at the second horizontal score line. That's just to keep this larger section free of score lines, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and fold and burnish, but only on the score lines that go all the way across the paper. This is just kind of a fun way to do a gift bag. You get a pretty decent sized gift bag. The finished dimensions of this one are, um, it's basically a one by two by three. So I'll show you that when we put it together. All right, so we've done that and you just have to decide which side of the designer series paper you can see the best. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of things here. So turning it to this way, where we've got our larger section here, I'm gonna cut up each of these vertical score lines. Again, it's vertical when you have it in this, in this diamond pattern or diamond orientation, I should say. And I'm gonna cut up each of those vertical score lines stopping at, we're gonna go past the short score line. So I'm gonna do it on the starry sky side, past the short score line and then stopping at that first horizontal score line that goes all the way across the paper like that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Like so, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is remove this little triangle, but leaving behind that little half inch, which is gonna turn into a tab. So just cut right along that short score line that we made. And you could save that for a project if you wanted to. So you've got kind of this tab. Okay, we'll do the same thing over here cutting right on that short score line we made, like so. I'm gonna repeat the same thing over here. Again, that large section down here, we're gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stop at that first horizontal score line that goes all the way across. So go right past that short one. Again, let's cut on those short score lines and remove that triangle. You could have some fun with the triangle pieces on a card. Like so. Now where we did that little, uh, it's like a three quarter inch score line, but that was the two and a half and the nine and a half score lines. I'm just gonna cut that right off for a flat edge here. Same thing over here. these cleaned up and the last thing we need to do is just to miter cut our tab so I like to fold that big section out of the way then we can just come in and miter cut those tabs I'm right-handed so it's just easier for me to cut here on the right side and remind me to show you my inspiration for this Reminding myself that I'm right-handed and it's easier to do it this way. There we go, get all these pieces out of here. Okay, so now 
our piece looks like, our template. So essentially what we've created is a little gift bag in a unique, unique way doing this on a diagonal and it gives us that really cool pointed top, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is adhere these tabs down to the inside. So I'm gonna start with one and we're essentially then going to line up this score line with this cut edge to start to form our little treat bag corner. So liquid glue and again, score line to cut edge like so. And then just work your way around the remaining three tabs. And you're just making sure that, that cut edge is lined up right there at that corner or score line. Love the chat. Reminds me of a gingerbread house, a treat tent. Really cute. Oh, Darby did one like this, cool. I've got a house box that I've done that has a, a shape like this, but it's a totally different style box. I've been on a diagonal score line kick lately. It's kind of, it's just fun what you can do with diagonal score lines. So that is the basics of this. And technically what I'll do is just pinch in the sides there to pinch the top together. So you kind of have this cute little treat bag, but it's got this pointed sort of roof-like structure. So I know you could do something really cool for um, Christmas time, like a gingerbread house kind of thing. So let me grab one of my favorite treats. And that's the Reese's Take Five. Now, this box itself, obviously it's even just a little bit bigger than the Reese's Take Five, but I wanted to give you options. So the uh, width of this is three inches by one inch by two inches up to the side wall there. Now, if you pinch it in, which is what's gonna happen when we tie our bow, you've got a little bit of tapering that you have to work with. But I think you might be able to get um, trying to think of some other ideas like Biscoff cookies might fit in here with a little tea bag, um, a handful of Hershey's Nuggets or Hershey's Kisses. Again, I had the Take Five on hand. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I've got. These are too long. Yeah, those are too long. But the mini Ghirardellis will fit in there. You could probably do an, a third one. A couple of Laffy Taffies will fit if you're doing this for Halloween. So you've got some, some ideas, okay? It's not just one size, not one size fits all. One fits one, it fits a number of different things. Now Brian knows what's in my stash. All right, so that's what's gonna go in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and punch our two holes for the ribbon. And this you can just completely decide um, you know, where you wanna put the holes. There, it all depends on kind of what you're putting in it, how far apart you want to have the holes. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and just come in. I'll let you know kind of where we're at. I'm gonna flip this over. Now I'm pinching. I lined up those edges before I'm coming in to punch. That just makes sure that the holes are lined up so that when we do tie the bow, um, it's gonna keep that sort of house part, the pointed part together. Now that's totally cattywampus, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a Halloween project and it's handmade, so there you go. So treats, put that in there, and then let me grab our ribbons. I was having fun pairing, I think I saw Julie Gilson from Stampin' Gala pair these two colors together and I loved it for Halloween. So we've got the gingham, the black and white quarter inch gingham ribbon. And then this is the uh, Parakeet Party uh, what's the metallic woven ribbon, which is just so fun to work with. So I'm gonna actually feed these through together, just making sure they've got a pointed edge. Now this could be 
fun to watch on a live stream if I can, if Julie can get this bow tied here. <laughs> we shall see. Working with two ribbons sometimes is no joke. <laughs> All right, so I've fed it through the front to the back and now the back to the front. And if you need to, like my ribbons have already started to fray here, I'm just gonna trim another point there. Give them a little haircut. There we go. All right, you're working with me so far. I love to have the spools on the right and then I flip them over to the left because I like to tie ribbon right off the spool and we're just gonna try to tie a bow with two ribbons. Oh, Nancy, praise. Y'all are reading in the chat. That's wonderful news, Nancy. Our community is gonna be thrilled for you. I am too, thank you for sharing that. All right, so I'm gonna use my reverse tweezers because they're my best friend when it comes to tying a bow. And we're gonna go ahead and tie these bows. Now, don't worry if your loops are different sizes, you can zhuzh it afterwards. And to be honest, it gives it a little bit more character when you've got two ribbons together. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tell the ribbon who's boss, let's see if it'll listen to me. Yay! All right, you just gotta get those loops through and then you're good. <laughs> then we can zhuzh. All right, let's get the loops. I just love these two paired together. A Little bit of sparkle and you got that black and white, which is super cute. If your treat bag is kind of falling in like that, just put your finger in, you can pop it back out, okay? And then I kind of pull the loops apart on the ribbon and then we'll come on in and trim the tails. There we go. But isn't that fun? The gingham with that woven, what's it called again? <laughs> That's the wrong one. Metallic woven ribbon in parakeet party. Perfect for Halloween. Okay, now we're gonna put this together really easily, but I'll talk about the dies that I used. So we've got uh, a deckled circle die. That's in basic black. Then we've got, this is from the Reach for the Stars dies. Uh, I love this set of dies because it's uh, one of the only ones that we've got these great layering circles included in it. And then we've got our stylus shapes. Again, same stamping and cutting that we did on the fun fold cards. So we're just gonna layer these three together. There we go. Love the deckled circles. So those are new in the mini catalog and you get a whole bunch of them. And they're so big, they don't fit on my five by seven magnet cards, but this does the trick. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 of them, I think, which is crazy. Love that. So love the way that that layering turned out. And then a little bit of bling on there. Where did I put my bling? Right here. I put my stuff in places while I'm talking and I don't remember where I put it. <laughs> so a little tiny rhinestone here. And then I'm just going to do a trio of dimensionals. And then we'll pop that in the center here. Ooh, so cute. But again, picture this with Christmas, a Christmas sentiment. Even this would be cute for a Thanksgiving dinner table, um, Place, party favorite, what would you call, what do I, place setting? <laughs> My brain tonight. So there is our Halloween 
what are we calling this? Diagonal treat bag. I don't know. I'll look at the chat afterwards and see if one of you guys nailed it. I'm sure you did. So there we go. So that is that one. And then again, here is the fun fold, which I can't stop opening and closing it because it's too much fun. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So, all right, why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's q and I saw some great questions coming through, so I always look forward to this. I thought that was a bug on my keyboard, but it's the little haircut I gave the ribbon. <laughs> oh, goodness. Do I have a video on my process of creating a 3D project? I'm particularly interested in how to make one for a candy bar. I do not have a video as far as um, coming up with measurements and things like that because there's so many factors that come into play. The style of the box, um, really the style is what comes, comes down to figuring out the measurements. So I honestly just kind of figure it out as I go. And yes, I do end up um, sending some paper to the recycling bin because that doesn't always work the first few times I try it. But yeah, I don't have a video for that particularly. Um, but I will keep it in mind as far as making like a basic box. But again, when it comes to um, different styles of boxes, there's no one way to come up with the measurements. So that would be a tough video to do, but I appreciate the question. When I put my labels on my die storage, do you put the label on the outside of the shop ticket or on the inside attached to the magnet sheet? So I put it on the outside, Cheryl, um, because um, I literally just take the label when it's time for me to put in new dies. Um, it's easier for me. Let me put it this way. If you label the magnet card, you have a really big mess on the magnet card. Plus, a lot of these dies fill up the entire magnet card, so I would be covering some of the label. Obviously, I could label the back if I wanted to, but on the vinyl shop ticket holders, I just remove the old label and put the new label right over the top of it. If it gets really gunky, you can actually take an alcohol wipe to get the adhesive off of the vinyl. So I don't, I wouldn't put alcohol on the magnet cards, but I would on the vinyl. So that's how I do it, right on the outside. I sure have Paula. My um, comments have gotten smaller. I think it must have been with the eCam update. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, we've taken Nolan to the Lego. Um, what's it called? Legoland Discovery Center here in Atlanta, and they've got a Lego store attached to it. I've also taken him to the Lego store at our local mall, and I've even been tempted to buy some of those awesome stamp sets. But yeah, he loves going to the store. My cutting blade keeps falling off of my trimmer. Is it because it's time to change it? It's never happened with my other blades. That is a good question, Deb. It's possible that your cutting track has... Um, worn down a little bit to where it's falling out faster. It should only be able to fall out at the bottom part of the cutting arm. Um, so you just have to be careful. I always try to keep my um, paper trimmer flat on a surface. That way I find that it's less often that it'll fall out of that little notch that's at the bottom. Um, but pay attention to that. If you're kind of like picking it up at an angle and things like that, it has the blade has a tendency to fall out, either the blade or the scoring blade. So. Um, but I'm not sure other than that, maybe there's, you could try to make, do a good clean to get any paper fuzzies out of your paper trimmer, that type of thing, and see if that helps. Otherwise, try a new blade and see if that does the trick. Yes, Paula, the size of the circle dies. I knew I was going to get that question. Okay, so let me come back to this. On the fun fold card. It is a two and a half inch diameter circle. On the treat holder, the deckled circle is one and three quarters. You could use our one and three quarter inch circle punch if you have that instead. The lemon lime twist is one and let's see. Uh oh, it's one and one, two, three, four. one and seven sixteenths, or you could either do one and a half or, um, one and three eighths. It's kind of right in between those. And then the smaller circle is one and a quarter. Okay. All right. What have you found as the best way to stamp and use the glow in the dark paper? We tried that during the, um, my product sneak peek. And I think the best 
ink was the stays on, but you do need to give it some time to dry. You could even use the heat tool on it as well, but stays on would be the one that I recommend for that one. Now granted, the Halloween stamp set is photopolymer and I always say caution using the stays on with photopolymer, so. Um, ooh, a pentagonal treat box. That's fun, Nicole. Hmm, I like it. Let's see. Would a peanut butter cup work in the treat box? I think it would, Mary, because I feel like Reese's peanut butter cups are getting smaller. Does anybody else feel that way? <laughs> but I think the single ones, that should fit in there. What you might need to do is move the hole punches up a little bit, um, but it should fit in there. You've got a little bit of room. Um, again, this height here is two inches, but you've got some space to go. So I'd give it a try. I don't have any of those in the house um, to double check for you though. Yes, Hershey's Nuggets will fit. A gift card will not fit. Uh, I'm gonna just show you, it's too wide for a gift card. But you could tweak, um, you could tweak the measurements. So the gift card, you just need it to be, is it three and an eighth? No, three and three and three eighths. So you'd need it to be about three and a half inches wide. This is three inches wide. So you'd need to add a quarter of an inch um, to those score lines. Yes, a chapstick will fit. And actually, since you said that, and I completely forgot to tell you guys my inspiration. So let me bring that back. I've dissected this, but this came from Lauren Urbonus. And it, this is holding a lip balm, so a chapstick. Okay, so she, this is a really cool way that she's done it. Her measurements are um, mostly different. I totally pixified mine, but as you can see, she's got these flaps that hold the chapstick in, and I've deconstructed it so it looks a little battered and beaten up, but I was studying it, so she's got a lip balm in there. So yes, it will fit a chapstick. Hers is three quarters of an inch wide, and mine is one inch wide. Um, but that's, this is my inspiration. So Lauren, thank you for the inspiration. I loved your swap from backstage. But yeah, that answers your question, Tina. Chapstick will fit for sure. All right. Got it, got it, Nancy. I just saw your question. Thank you. Let's see. It's been a while since you made a sturdy box to hold a set of cards. Would you be able to do one with a Christmas theme and perhaps put a window in the top? I will keep that in mind, Sue. Thanks for the suggestion. Let's see. I'm wondering if you tip the treat bag upside down, it would look like a dreidel. I would want to make this for Hanukkah and put in chocolate coins. I thought it would be a little different. That's really cute. A really cute idea. I'm trying to think. I'm looking at this from the perspective of that. That could be really cute. Um, you'd have to be a little bit creative if the recipient was okay kind of opening it from the bottom, but I love the idea. And if you come up with it, please share a photo with me because I would love to see it. Support at thepaperpixie.com. <laughs> you guys are awesome. We are to the end of the questions. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. That's where I wanted to go. If you got a fun tip or trick or learned something new tonight, be sure to like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to welcome you as a subscriber. I'm gonna be live next Wednesday for drum roll episode 300. I'm still having a hard time believing that we're gonna have episode 300 next week. So we're, we're gonna have some fun. I think we're gonna do some prize patrol. We'll have fun celebrating that next week. So I hope you'll come back and join us next Wednesday. That is September 27th. 2023 at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Again, the clearance rack was refreshed, so go check that out. You can shop with me at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. As always, thanks for joining me. Thanks to those of you watching on replay. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, and I'll see you next week for episode 300. Remember, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Take care of a wonderful and blessed week. See you next Wednesday. Bye.